So I'm Foster Alla. I am a professor uh, in the Department of Psychology in the Behavioral Neuroscience Division. My research focuses on uh, drug addiction and mostly looking at the changes in the brain that occur um, at a very microscopic level to find out what is going on in the, in the addict's brain that might actually lead us to somehow I don't think we're ever going to prevent people from taking drugs you know, altogether, but I think it would be great if we could actually help quote unquote repair their brains once they've been exposed to those and taking the drugs for a long period of time because drugs really do in fact kind of rewire the brain and make people um, more prone to using drugs and relapsing and so their brains are not as what a normal person or a, you know, a non-addict uh, brain would be like. The brain is actually physically changed, so we're actually looking for ways to uh, identify and reverse those things. So we use uh, primarily the lab rats and mice, and they are uh, very social creatures. They are actually also, for the most part, very actually interested in taking drugs, believe it or not. They, um, they like the kind of the powerful drugs like heroin, cocaine, methamphetamine, you know, almost as much as people um, for, or for those who, who engage in that. So uh, we look at, uh, oftentimes we'll look at their brains under a microscope um, using very specific markers of specific proteins. Uh, we look for degenerating cells, cells that are dying off. We are now looking at cells that might be inflamed or, uh, you know, kind of uh, undergone some part of a drug-induced inflammation, which actually affects how the brain uh, works. Um, we actually even look at neurotransmitters, or mole molecule, chemical messengers, essentially, that uh, communicate between cells and tell each other what to do and how those are perturbed and uh, for a long, uh, a long time after, you know, uh, period of taking drugs. So. Yeah, so historically people um, over the past 40 years or so have primarily focused on this neurotransmitter called dopamine, which is oftentimes portrayed in the media and the you know, uh, uh, you know, popular news as a, as, a, as a pleasure chemical, as a, you know, the brain's pleasure chemical. It's, as with everything, it's never quite that simple. Um, it's no, there's no one neurotransmitter that really creates pleasure or pain or any other single you know, emotion or motivation. So one thing we uh, also look at are endorphins, which we know that actually drugs produce. Uh, they increase the uh, synthesis and the release of endorphins, which are of course, uh, most people are familiar with those in the context of exercise and kind of endorphin rush or you know, maybe even acupuncture. People kind of quantify uh, or they tend to look at um, endorphin release as a, as a result of acupuncture. Um, but it turns out that uh, endorphins are also stimulated by um, um, abused drugs, and they're very, they're a lot more difficult to measure just by their chemical nature. So uh, that's probably why a lot of people have not focused on them. Um, uh, so we're looking at that. We're looking to see how the brain's endorphin neural circuitry responds to various drugs. Primarily, we're looking at alcohol because one of the medications that is approved for treating alcoholism actually blocks the effects of endorphins. It actually has nothing to do directly with dopamine. So one, of, it's called naltrexone, um, and it is an opiate blocker. It's actually similar to the ones that are used to treat opiate overdose. So uh, we tend to look at the, uh, the endorphin system as kind of a, another central figure in how the brain processes reward, motivation, things that feel good, things that don't feel good. Um, and it turns out that endorphins are also infinitely complex. They are released in response to pain, for example, that the body's own kind of, uh, in fact, the, the word endorphin is actually a conjunction of endogenous morphine, which is, you know, the body's own morphine. It's not actual morphine, but it's, it acts very similar. So, uh, so you know, it does a lot of things. Um, so we're interested in how it actually um, gets engaged and how it maybe even get a little bit out of whack with uh, you know constant use of drugs and alcohol, for example.